Aptronic has created a human-sized android robot for physical labor. A robot pilot from South Korea, Apple, is developing an AR interface for car windshields. Frank Zapata, the inventor of the flyboard, presented the world's first hybrid air scooter, which is invisible to the human eye. India has become the fourth country to successfully land its spacecraft on the moon. All of this and much more is happening right now. The United States Patent and Trademark Office has published Apple's patent application, which is dedicated to a new information display system in electric cars. Unlike conventional solutions, this system allows the use of the windshield of the vehicle as a display. According to the documentation, the next generation augmented reality system will have the capability to project information directly onto the windshield or any other transparent surface. While specific details remain undisclosed, the description suggests the use of projection technology. Among the potential features of this proprietary system are the display of navigation data, real-time speed visualization, 3D representation of static objects outside the driver's field of view, as well as information about traffic regulations specific to a given area, such as pedestrian crossings and various obstacles. Additionally, Apple's patent application mentions the potential for FaceTime communication between passengers in different vehicles. Currently, this technology exists only on paper, and its actual implementation in electric cars remains uncertain. Frankie Zapata, renowned for his high-speed performances on the flyboard, has introduced a self-developed hybrid vehicle named Air Scooter. This prototype reaches speeds of 100 km per hour and offers a flight duration of two hours. The electric scooter prototype, named Zapita Air Scooter, was unveiled at the Vivo Technology Exhibition in Paris. The egg-shaped capsule with legs forms a single-seat cocoon, and above the capsule's roof, eight carbon supports hold the electric propellers. These propellers, with a diameter of less than a meter, are positioned on four elongated diagonal supports. Two rear diagonals are connected by an aerodynamic wing, set at an angle to provide lift. When tilted forward, the apparatus gains altitude and moves ahead. While most hybrid vertical takeoff and landing vehicles utilize a central generator driving engines, often a small gas turbine that constantly charges the battery during flight, Zapata's vehicle appears to follow a different approach. Instead of a central generator, four large propellers are individually powered by separate engines situated directly beneath them at the ends of the supports. Fuel is supplied through lines running along the upper sections of these supports. The larger propellers are designed to provide primary thrust, resulting in slower rotation. The assumption is that with significant electrical support, the eight smaller electric-powered propellers will respond more rapidly to changes in energy supply. These smaller propellers are expected to be used for mid-flight balance adjustments and self-stabilization directed by the flight control system, especially during challenging weather conditions. A team of engineers and researchers from the Korean Institute of Science and Technology is developing a humanoid robot capable of piloting an aircraft without the need for cockpit modifications. The final version of this robot, named Peabot, is expected to be ready within two, three years. Peabot can successfully manipulate an aircraft's control yoke, much like a human pilot, using its hands and fingers to operate all the controls in the cockpit. It can proficiently handle flight instruments, even in situations of strong turbulence, thanks to external cameras that allow it to monitor the aircraft's current state. Internal cameras assist Peabot in managing crucial switches on the control panel. One of Peabot's remarkable achievements is its ability to comprehend and remember complex instructions presented in natural language. This feature enhances its adaptability to various types of aircraft. Its memory capacity is so extensive that it can memorize all aeronautical charts worldwide, something human pilots find impossible. The robot is currently in the development stage, and it's anticipated to be completed by 2026. The project was commissioned by South Korea's Defense Technology Development Agency. The company Aptronic has unveiled the humanoid robot named Apollo, the development of which was announced back in January. This android-based robot standing at human height is designed for heavy physical work and can operate for four hours without needing a battery replacement. Over the past seven, eight years, Aptronic has developed several humanoid robots and a couple of exoskeletons, 
In contrast to its previous projects, Apollo was created with a clear commercialization goal, which necessitates considering aspects that weren't previously relevant, such as miniaturization, ease of maintenance, reliability, and cost-effectiveness. The engineers decided to build a minimally viable platform for Apollo that can be further customized based on the customer's needs, somewhat like an iPhone among robots. Highly productive, user-friendly, and multifunctional. The company introduced a humanoid robot standing 1.7 meters tall, weighing 73 kilograms, and capable of carrying a maximum payload of 25 kilograms using swappable batteries. Apollo can operate for four hours. Currently, even though they have two such robots, they are constructing four more. While Aptronic focuses on developing solutions for logistics and manufacturing, Apollo serves as a versatile assistant. Partner developers can expand Apollo's functionality and apply it in various fields, including construction, oil and gas industries, electronics manufacturing, retail, home delivery, elderly care, and more. Most humanoid robots entering the market are designed for processing standard containers, boxes and crates, and this is no coincidence. Few people are willing to perform routine and physically demanding tasks, making robots like Apollo in demand. According to the developers, in the long term, a humanoid robot should cost less than $50,000, and Android-based robots should be comparable to the price of cars, if not cheaper, due to their lower raw material requirements. Experts from MIT have developed a trajectory planning and flight control algorithm for tail sitters, which are aircraft that take off and land vertically on their tails. A tail sitter is an aircraft with a fixed wing that launches and lands vertically on its tail section. During flight, it transitions to a horizontal position. The concept behind this design can be traced back to Nikola Tesla's ideas, but until now, the complexity of implementation has prevented its adoption in aviation. Drones for vertical takeoff and landing have introduced this configuration, enabling higher speeds and efficiency similar to airplanes, while also offering the hovering capability of helicopters. Calculating the flight trajectory for tail sitters is challenging due to their complex rotor and flap systems, often requiring significant time and computation. To address this, engineers introduced a differential flatness concept, allowing them to use a mathematical function to quickly assess the feasibility of a trajectory. Tests have demonstrated that tail sitters employing this algorithm can execute intricate aerobatic maneuvers such as loops, rolls, and spirals. In fact, three copters engaged in an aerial race, performing complex synchronized actions simulating flight through a demolished building and evasive maneuvers at high speeds. All of these maneuvers would have been impossible to plan in real time without the new algorithm, which significantly enhances their feasibility and precision. India has become the fourth country to successfully land its spacecraft on the moon. The Chandrayaan-3, an automatic interplanetary station, which was launched on July 14th from a spaceport in the southern part of India, has successfully reached the lunar surface. The lunar rover, Pragyan, is soon expected to begin its mission to search for water. The Chandrayaan-3 mission replicated the flight of its predecessor, the Chandrayaan-2, which unfortunately ended in a crash. However, this time, the mission took into account and rectified the errors. India's achievement can be attributed to extensive reforms in the landing strategy. The algorithms responsible for real-time speed calculation were reworked, and the landing zone was expanded. Additionally, the module's landing gear was reinforced to ensure a successful landing. LG has introduced its latest product, the Stand By Me Go. It is essentially a suitcase with a built-in portable television. Imagine the surprised expressions of subway passengers when you take out the Stand By Me Go and unfold it, revealing a 27-inch touchscreen display with an integrated battery and speakers. Yes, the company has indeed started selling this unique device beyond its home market. You can pre-order it for $1.00 and the first shipments will commence at the end of this month. For orders placed before August 27th, a gift of the LG X Boom 360 wireless speaker valued at $300 is offered. The Stand By Me Go looks just like a regular suitcase and is designed exclusively for entertainment. The television operates on the LG WebOS platform, enabling app installation and content viewing via Wi-Fi. It also features HDMI ports and the capability for wireless content transmission through AirPlay and Bluetooth. According to LG's statement, the autonomous operating time is up to three hours. 
This innovation adds a new dimension to portable entertainment and travel convenience. Scientists from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have developed an invisible marking system named Bright Marker, which embeds fluorescent labels into objects. QR codes have become widely used due to the pandemic, enabling quick and convenient access to websites by scanning a small black and white square. However, the challenge lies in the fact that QR codes can be substituted with codes linked to fraud or viruses. Moreover, QR codes occupy space on objects, detracting from their design. In contrast, Brightmarker needs to be directly embedded into a 3D printed object during the modeling stage using a software plugin. The label is integrated into the digital model and exported in STL format. Subsequently, the object with the concealed label is 3D printed using fluorescent filaments. Scientists assert that such a label does not alter the shape, functionality, or external appearance of the object. These fluorescent materials constituting the labels emit light in the near-infrared range, ensuring they exhibit high contrast when viewed through infrared cameras. The research team has also developed compact hardware accessories that can be attached to smartphones or VR headsets to detect these hidden markers. This innovation presents an alternative approach to object identification and interaction that addresses the limitations and drawbacks of traditional QR codes.